Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. This week's tutorial is totally different than anything that I've done so far in the fact that we're not on the computer at all this week. We're doing fine art and we're going to create some hand lettering using a water brush and some cardstock. So as you can see right in front of me, this is what we're going to be creating. And I figured as long as we're learning the water brush, we might as well have something that we can gift to someone else or just use for practice for ourselves. So everyone has a birthday, so this will be perfect if you're happy with your outcome where you can create your own card out of your lettering. So this is the final outcome, and I'm gonna share some of the other lettering that I've created just so you can have an idea of how great the water brush really is. First, let me show you what the water brush looks like. Um, we have right here, I bought the assorted set, so I've got a small, a medium, and a large brush right here. And I'm gonna leave links to every single item that I'm showing you here, um, so if you're interested and doing this yourself, you'll have the same tools that I'm using. So I generally use the medium or the small brush for most things that I do. If I need something really large, then I'll move to this large brush. So I've got a small, a medium, and a large, and I'm going to be using a medium for this tutorial so you can see everything that I'm doing really clearly. And I'm also using um, a, just a really basic 12 set of Pentel watercolors, and here's a few of them right here, and I'll give you the names of the exact colors I'm using for what we create as well. Okay, so some of you um, maybe follow me over on Instagram. My handle is at every Tuesday. There's no hyphen in there. And I've done a lot of time-lapse uh, watercolor videos lately, and I had a bunch of questions asking if I would share some of the tips that I have for people that are creating artwork on their own. So that's why we're here this week and we're doing this. So I want to show you some of the artwork that I've created before so you can have an idea of what this water brush can do. So... Sometimes I like integrating some flourishes into the artwork, mixing cap and script lettering, sometimes just a regular script. And you can see this one was created with a medium uh, brush, and some of the, the weights are much heavier versus the much thinner, softer um, strokes here. This one was... A time lapse. If you want to check out my Instagram, there is a time lapse of this one. You can create other greeting cards if you'd like. This is my dog's name, Nuna Petunia. And then you can add some illustration to your lettering as well. So those are just some examples of things that I've done with the water brush, and I'm obsessed with it. Okay, so the, the type of cardstock that I'm using, this is just regular store-bought, um, nothing special cardstock and it's 110 weight, 92 bright, and there's 150 sheets in here. And I actually, um, I think I paid like five bucks for this. It takes a lot of the pressure off of using watercolor paper because watercolor paper is pretty pricey. And you have control over how much water gets into your, um, your paper. And I've noticed that cardstock, because it's more affordable and I've got that control, it actually doesn't bother the paper at all, and I've been really, really happy with the results, so it's a huge win there. So a um, couple more things to mention. I'm using just a regular palette. I paid 99 cents for this guy, and really basic, you know, just to keep the paint in there. And then I just have a paper towel for cleaning off the tip whenever I need to change color, so really simple and really easy to use. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is show you a few basic letters, and I think that's always a really good idea for warming up. And I'll show you some color mixing and then some just basic techniques um, that I use every time that I letter. So over here, I've put in, we're gonna start with some blue-green. So I'm using this Viridian for my darker green right here, and then I'm using Prussian blue for my darker blue right here. And all I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of my blue you want to douse the end, and I'm just, whenever you need water, just very, very gently squeeze because sometimes it comes out quite a bit. Um, so less is definitely more in this type of situation. So you want a saturated tip, whoops, you want a saturated tip, but you don't want it to be globby when it comes out. So just make sure you've got enough um, that you could get through a word, which I always like doing. If you have to re-dip, I'll, um, I'll show you what I do in those situations too. So I'm grabbing a bunch of blue, so my tip's pretty blue. And then I'm just going to grab a little bit of green, and this will help me to get those nice color streaks in it. So I'm just going to write out um, really basic just to get our hands warmed up. You want to go really soft on your upstrokes and really 
heavy on your downstrokes. So the pressure is very heavy when you come down, light when you come up, heavy when you come down, light, heavy. You can see I've got a really pretty fade from green to blue here, which is nice. And then um, I'm gonna grab some more blue and a little more green. And now um, you wanna try a longer word. So maybe you try heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, light. And whenever I do crossbars, I always try and like redraw the downstroke so it fades in that crossbar a little bit. Sometimes um, I'll make a mental note that when I'm drawing, here I'll show you. So when I draw this, when I have when I need a crossbar, when I come down, I let go and I make my crossbar right then so I have similar paint on my brush before it fades too much, and then I'll continue the word. Okay, so we also want to practice making some cap letters because that adds some really nice contrast if you've got quotes or anything else that you're doing. So I'm just going to grab a little more paint, grab a little more green, and then downstrokes, once again, are always heavy weight, lots of pressure, crossbars, lightweight, um, very little pressure. So you can see you get some really pretty watercolor fades when you do that. Let me do one more. And wherever you decide to have your X height, so where I made my first crossbar, that's my X height, so I want to make sure I maintain that throughout the word. Okay, I think we're ready for our cards. So we're gonna make our card using a purple and a red streak through it. So I need to clean my brush and all I'm gonna do is, this time I'm gonna squeeze quite a bit because I wanna get all the paint out of the tip. And if it's, sometimes it gets a little stained on the tip, but don't freak out because see, when I, when I paint with it, it's not coming out, so don't worry about that. You just wanna make sure when you um, squeeze some water out and you're cleaning your brush that you're not getting any more color and I'm not, so I'm good to go here. Okay, so this is how I made my purple. I grabbed just my regular red from Pentel and I put it in here and then I put, I'm using my darker blue, so it's the Prussian blue once again in here instead of my cobalt blue. If you wanted a lighter purple, I would use cobalt, but this is a darker purple. And what I did is I put the two paints in here, I swooshed them up and mixed them together and then I cleaned my brush because whenever you um, mix colors together on your palette it'll get really globby on the tip and you don't want really huge globs of paint when you're drawing so I clean my tip and then um, then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna get more paint on my tip but it's not gonna be as globby as it was before So I'm just grabbing some paint and if you need a little water just remember to gently squeeze and it'll be more than enough so I got my purple and then I'm just going to grab a little bit of red in here. The red's drying up a little bit so let me make sure I'm getting some red. Okay, so now I can come back here and I'm just going to write out birthday first and then I'm going to put happy in all caps right above it so it can sit right in there. So remember heavy on your downstrokes and light on your upstrokes. Heavy, light, not too light. Need a line there. Heavy, light, heavy, light. And like I said before, when you come down, now's a perfect time to do that crossbar on the T. You can clean that up a little. Maybe come all the way down. There we go. And then we want to come up, light, heavy, light, heavy, heavy, light, heavy, light. Heavy, light. And you can see I'm starting to run out of paint, but it's still readable and I really like keeping it all in one stroke if I can. This is pretty heavy over here, but I think it's still gonna dry really pretty, so I'm okay with that. Okay, so now we can, you can see I've got a little bit of jagginess happening right here and all you have to do is come through and you can smooth it out a little bit afterwards. Um, same with the R. Just be really gentle. 
Or you can just leave it, you know, it's nice to have some imperfections too. Okay, so now we've got our birthday and now I'm gonna re-dip into my paint. So I'm gonna grab my purple again. And I'm also gonna grab some red. Maybe a little more purple. And now I'm gonna do my caps. And I'm going to make the H kind of come off so I don't dot the I with a dot. I dot it with the H. Up is light. Down is heavy. Match your X height. Once again, I'm going to match my X height for the P's. Okay, so there you go. That's how to hand letter. Happy birthday using a water brush, some Pentel watercolors, your palette, and an extra paper towel just for cleaning your brush. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And make sure to head over onto my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And don't forget to check out my Instagram, too, at every Tuesday if you want to see more watercolor brush examples and some time lapses as well. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.